welcome in last class we looked into gram schmidt process this process essentially starts with a set of independent vectors and then generate a set of orthogonal vectors from those independent vectors it's not only orthogonal vectors the vectors are also orthonormal vectors which we obtain through a gram schmidt process so in that process if we have a matrix with independent columns the matrix turns into a q matrix or, or the transform matrix turn, turns into a q matrix or a matrix with orthonormal uh, columns. In case of a square matrix, we get a matrix which is called an orthogonal matrix or matrix which has all orthonormal columns. So, in today's class, we will start look into more detail on gram schmidt process and we have earlier discussed that getting orthonormal columns is important in terms of matrix solution. For example, if we have a matrix say x is equal to b and we can convert it to a form q x is equal to c where q is the orthonormal transformation of the matrix A and then we can take the c vector and project it against a all of the basis orthonormal basis of q or all the columns of q and the projection will be solution x 1, x 2, x n. So, the sol matrix solution becomes essentially much simple if we can transform a matrix from the matrix A to an orthonormal matrix Q. So, today's class we will look into more detail of the gram schmidt process, do a quick recapitulation of what we discussed in last class and then we will uh, try to do some examples, some gram schmidt process. We will see how the gram schmidt algorithm should be for practical implementation purpose and then we will go to keyword decomposition of the matrix and see how it is useful in matrix solvers. So, gram schmidt process uh, in real coordinate space R3, we have discussed this exactly this slide in the last class. I have three vectors A, B and C, these three are independent vectors, but they are not mutually orthogonal to each other and the uh, uh, goal of gram schmidt process is to get a set of mutually orthonormal basis vectors. Orthonormal means the vector should be orthogonal to each other and each of the vectors should have a length equal to unity. So, we take the first vector A and divide it by its length. So, we get an unit vector along A which is first vector in my Gram Schmidt set. The next vector Q 2 which will be a ortho orthogonal vector to A 1 A as well as it should be it should contain some component of B true and it should have a unit length. So, what we do? We project B on Q 1, Q 1 is an in unit vector. So, the project if I take B dot Q 1, the dot product is the length of the projection of B on Q 1 and then we subtract Q 1 transpose B or B dot Q along the direction Q 1 from B. So, we get the vector capital B which is orthogonal to q 1 or to a because p is decomposed can be decomposed in two parts one is along q 1 another is perpendicular to q 1. So, when we take projection of b along q 1 and we subtract it from the main matrix b the capital the main vector b the cap the new vector capital b becomes orthogonal to a and then we take or orthogonal to q 1 q 1 is along a and then we find out its length divide the vector by its length. So, we get another unit vector q 2. Now, we have the third vector c. So, we keep on doing this can keep on doing this for any number of vectors. We project c both along q 1 and along q 2 and subtract the projections from the sorry subtract the projections from the vector c and get a vector capital C. This capital C is now orthogonal to both q 1 and q 2 and we divide this capital C by its length and get a unit vector which is orthogonal to q 1 and q 2. So, in this process we get three vectors q 1, q 2, q 3. These three vectors are orthogonal to each other and each of them have unit length. So, we call we, got, we tell that we have arrived into a orthonormal set of vectors. And now for any number of vectors this any number of Indian uh, independent vectors this idea can be repeated. So, we subtract from a, one particular vector which is independent to few other vectors and these other vectors we got an orthogonal set orthonormal set of vectors. So, we project this particular vector to the previous set of orthonormal vectors and 
subtract the projection from this vector. So, the remaining part is perpendicular to the already obtained set of orthonormal vectors and then we divide it by its length and get a new vector which is orthonormal to the previous set of vectors. So, gram schmidt starts with independent vectors a1, a2, a3 and ends up with orthonormal vectors q1, q2, qn. At each step, it subtracts from the a vector aj its components along the direction q1 to qj minus 1 which are the orthonormal vectors which have already been settled as like this and then from capital A, the, it divides capital A by its length to get a unit vector along this direction. So, it essentially creates number of unit vectors which are mutually perpendicular to each other and what is the num number of mutually perpendicular vectors that will be exactly the number of mutually independent vectors with which we have started because perpendicular vectors are also independent vectors. So, we take a particular vector subspace which is spanned by the independent vectors whose set was given to us initially and then we get a new basis for that set which are mutually orthogonal vector and each has length 1 which are q 1 to q n. Now, we can uh, write down the algorithm and we'll try to write down the algorithm like that we, we have set a uh, we have a set of linearly independent vectors v 1 to v n and then we make that the first vector uh, we, we get another vector denote another vector u 1 which is equal to v 1 for the first vector and the unit vector along the direction u 1 is q 1 is equal to u 1 by mod u. For the second vector we subtract from v 2 the projection of v 2 along q 1. So, this becomes a vector perpendicular that means we, what we get u 2 is perpendicular to q 2 and we divide u 2 by its uh, modulus and get uh, sorry u 2 is perpendicular to q 1 which is already settled. We divide u 2 by its modulus and get an unit vector q 2. Similarly, what we do? We subtract from v 2 its projection along q 1 and its projection along q 2. So, what we get a new vector u 2 which is perpendicular to both q 1 and q 2 and we divide it by the modulus of the vector itself. So, we get an unit vector along this direction. For the fourth vector we do the same thing from sorry this is v 3 this will be v 3 from v 4 this will be v 4 from v 4 we subtract the projection of v 4 along q 1 the projection of v 4 along q 2 and the projection of v 4 along q 3. So, we get a new vector u 4 which is perpendicular to q 1 q 2 and q 3 and we find a unit vector like that. So, so, so that way we can go up to k vectors any number of independent vectors in a particular subspace only the number of independent vectors cannot be more than the dimension of the subspace or if we think of real coordinate space r n we cannot have more than n number of vectors there. And each vector is from each vector we subtract its projection from the previously settled orthogonal vectors. So, what remains is that the component of the vector which is perpendicular to the set of orthogonal vectors we have obtained already like for step 4 what remains as u 4 when we subtract from v 4 its projection along q 1, q 2, q 3 what remains in u 4 is, is a vector which is perpendicular to both q 1, q 2 and q 3, q 1, q 2 and q 3. So, in that way we have to take a vector, we have to project it along few orthogonal vectors which are already settled in and we have to subtract the projections from that particular vector. What will remain with us is a vector which is perpendicular to the previous or set of orthogonal vectors and we will find the unit vector along that. So, when the projector the, pro, the, the projector operator is defined as q i transpose v j by q i transpose q i 
as q is an unit vector this sorry as q is an unit vector this length this is this is, is equal to 1 as q is an unit vector. So, projection operator here will basically give us q i transpose v j into q i. This is a dot product. So, this is a scalar quantity it is a scalar into q i. So, some length along the direction q i, q i is a unit length. So, this is the amount the magnitude of the projection along the direction of q i. Okay. So, this, this we have discussed in detail in last class. So, we now take an example, we have vectors 3 4 0, 0 4 3 and 1 0 1, they, they are independent vectors, yeah, we can quickly check and now we have to, so this is an independent set of vectors, we can only work with an independent set of vector if we are working on gram schmidt and now we have to get a set of mutually orthogonal vectors. So, the first step is uh, very easy you take the first vector v 1, the first vector v 1 and get q 1 out of it just divide v 1 by its length. So, 3 4 0 the length is 3 square plus 4 square and root over of that which is 9 plus 16 root which is 5 and the unit vector becomes 0 0.6 0 0.80 and we can quickly check the length is 0 0.6 square plus 0 0.8 square is 36 plus uh, 0.36 plus 0 0.64 and if I take a square root of that this is 1 fine. Now, the second vector is obtained as the first vector, uh, the second vector uh, for second, uh, second orthonormal vector what we do we take the second vector also take a dot product of the second vector with q 1 and uh, multiply with q 1 the dot product along q 1. So, this will give us the projected vector of v 2 along q 1 and subtract it from v 2. So, this will be what, what we can write u 2 is equal to v 2 minus projection of v 2 along q 2 and what is projection of v 2 along q 2 if this is v 2 and this is q 2. So, this length this length is v 2 q 2 dot, dot v 2 and the particular vector is q sorry this is q 1 that is not q 2 I am sorry one second this is q 1. this is q 1. So, u 2 is obtained as v 2 minus projection of v 2 along q 1. So, this is v 2, this is q 1, this is projection of v 2 along q 1, its length is q 1 transpose v 2, the vector is q 1 transpose q 1 along q 1 is an unit vector. So, along this direction we have q 1 transpose v 2 and the sum uh, the difference from v 2 minus this is v 2 minus q 1 transpose v 2 along q 1. This vector is perpendicular to q 1. So, from v 2 we subtract from v 2 we subtract the part q 1 transpose v 2 q 1 and we get v 2 minus q 1 transpose v 2 q 1 which is perpendicular to v 1 or q 1. So, the so we get a vector which is point minus 1 1.9 to 1 1.443 and this vector is perpendicular to. So, I can say that this is perpendicular to q 1. So, my q 2 q 2 must be perpendicular to q 1. So, q 2 will be this vector u 2 divided by its modulus which gives us minus 0 0.5, 0 0.375, 0 0.78 and we can try to do q 1 dot q 2 here, oh, sorry. We can try to find uh, verify it q 1 transpose q 2 is equal to 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 into 
minus 0 0.5, 0 0.375, 0 0.78, which is 0.5 minus 0.5 into 0.6 is point uh, is minus 0.3 minus 0 0.3, 0 0.8 into 0 0.375 is plus 0 0.3 and this is 0 into 0 0.780. So, this is 0. So, Q 1 and Q 2 are orthogonal that is also verified. So, now we have to find out the third vector for the gram schmidt process because there are three vectors. So, we will also get three mutually orthogonal vectors, three orthonormal vector vectors when we do the gram schmidt process. So, if we look into the third vector that is u from u 3, we from first vector we subtract its projection along q 1 and its projection along q 2. So, which is now basically u 3 is equal to v 3 minus q 1 transpose v 3 q 1 minus q 2 transpose v 3. So, this is v 3 minus 0 0.6080 q 1 transpose 101 along q 1 minus 0 0.5 0 0.375 0 0.78 101 with minus 0 0.5 0 0.375 0 0.78 and this gives us 101 minus this length is the projection magnitude is 0 0.6, the projection magnitude is 0 0.28 here. So, minus 0 0.6 into q 1 minus 0 0.28 into q 2 and we get minus 0 0.78, 0 0.585, 0 0.78. So, this u 3 is now perpendicular to both q 1 and q 2, this is perpendicular to both the vectors q 1 and q 2. So, we get a third vector u 3 which is perpendicular to both q 1 and q 2. However, we do not know whether q 3 is also uh, whether q 3 is unit vector or not, but we can very easily verify that. So, we will find its length and this the length is obviously not 1. So, we divide u 3 by the length and we will get q 3. So, q 3 is u 3 by the length of u 3 which is 0 0.624, 0 0.468, 0 0.624. So, from the independent set of vectors v 1, v 2, v 3, we got an orthonormal set which is q 1, q 2, q 3 and we can check for the orthonormality in a sense we should check that mod this the L2 norm for both this case q1, q2, q3, this norm is equal to 0 0.36 plus 0 0.8, 0 0.64, 1 root over 1 is 1, 0 0.25 plus 0 0.78 square plus 0 0.37 square root, this is also 1 and this is all, all these are 1 and q2 transpose q1 is equal to q3 transpose q 2 is equal to q 1 transpose q 3 all these are 0. So, this is what finally, can be checked and this satisfies that the set of vectors we obtained are orthonormal sets. So, this process is essentially very simple you only have to follow certain steps the step is that first start we take the first vector divide it by its length get the first vector in the orthonormal set. Now, for any subsequent vector in that orthonormal set you take the linearly independent vector which is remaining with you now project it with the already found out orthonormal vectors and from the vector subtract the projections. So, what we will get is the new vector which is perpendicular to the already found orthonormal set of vectors and divide this vector by its length and you will find an unit vector along this. However, this particular process when we try to implement it in a computer program gives some issues. 
Gram-Smith process is often found to be numerically unstable. That is, when we try to check for orthonormality, the final vectors, when we take their dot products, the dot products are often non-zero. However, the formulation is sound, so we should not get a non-zero dot product when we get q2 uh, any q uh, q i q q i plus 1 etcetera. Because every q we are finding from a vector which is perpendicular to previously settled vectors. However, what we see that there is a round of error introduced by k minus 1 projection operation at kth step. So, what is the kth step? The vector perpendicular to already settled orthonormal vectors q 1 to q k minus 1 is obtained as v k minus its projection from v k minus uh, uh, to q 1 minus its projection on q 2 minus its projection on q 3 etcetera. So, it is supposed that uh, v k v k minus projection of v k along q j projection of v k along q j. This vector should be, so from v k we are subtracting the component of v k which is along q j. So, what will remain is the component which is perpendicular to q j from uh, um, uh, vector v k from this vector we are subtracting its component which is along this line. So, what will remain is the vector is this vector which is perpendicular to this line on which it I am projecting it. So, this should be perpendicular to q j. So, if I write v k minus projection of v k q, uh, uh, q along q 1, this should be perpendicular to this particular part should be perpendicular to q 1. Now, from that perpendicular part, we are subtracting few other components which are perpendicular to q 2, q 3, q 4 etcetera. However, in each subtraction or each projection, what is a projection operation? A uh, typical projection operation looks like projection of q j on v k, projection of v k on q j is equal to q j transpose v k along q j. So, this is dot product between two vectors. So, it needs Se several multiplications. And then also when we are finding out q 3, q uh, q 2, q 3, q k plus 1, we are dividing it by the uh, by modulus of this vector. So, all these calculations are introducing a round of error because all these are dealing with real numbers and if I have some number which is uh, 3 by 7 that has to be truncated after 8 decimal or 12 decimal or 16 decimal place in a computer program. So, we cannot write a, uh, uh, a, a division up to infinite digits. Similarly, we will get irrational numbers also like he, here also because we are finding out root over of certain uh, values when finding out length and this root over this irrational number will also be truncated after certain values. So, as the round of errors are being introduced and each step we are introducing some of the errors. So, due to this error, this term does not remain, if there is no error uh, from a perpendicular vector, we are subtracting something, it will still from, from a vector which is perpendicular to this, we are subtracting something, it would have still remained perpendicular to this. But what we are subtracting now is introducing some error. So, the this vector is being reduced along the this error is random, so it can re it can reduce in any direction. So, it might know from perpendicular it might not get remain perpendicular to q 1. So, and it happens that this does not remain perpendicular 
to q 1. So, so what we get is a set of ortho uh, is a set of vectors which are not perpendicular to each other or as as uh, uh, as the product as the final result we get a sector so set of vectors which are not producing zero dot product so what will be the remedy the remedy is to subtract the projection from i th vector from the next u vector as soon as qi is settled and we'll check it uh, quickly so once we find out this particular like this particular vector now instead of projecting vk on q2 sorry instead of projecting vk on q2 we will project this subtraction on q2 and subtract it so uh, in a sense if i have a vector like this and i project it on, on this q and got that this is my u now instead of again projecting v onto a third vector which you are doing here will project u on the third vector because this is already an ortho perpendicular vector I will only project u and that's, that will reduce the issues due to round of error. So, the solution will be subtract the projection of ith vector from the next u vector as soon as q i is settled. And the sorry, the steps will be first find u k one v k minus q one v k. Once once we have found q one, subtract its projections, project all the vectors, all the remaining vectors on q one and subtract it from them. And for k th vector, you got u k one, which is v k, the original k th vector from it the its projection along q 1 is subtracted. Now, when you found q 2 you subtract the projection of u k 1 on q 2 from u k 1 and get u k 2 and it in the step when q in which q 1 is obtained you do it for k minus 1 th step and then finally, in the step where q sorry k minus 1 is obtained and then finally, find q k is equal to u k by mod u k. The collection of operations are uh, arithmetically same as what we are doing in gram smith method only instead of projecting v say for example, for finding out u k you project v k on q 1 q 2 up to k minus 1 instead you project v k on q 1 and get this as u k 1. Now, project u k 1 on q 2 and subtract this then get u k 2 and then project u k 2 on q 3 and subtract it and get u k 3 and so on. And this essentially gives you a, a set of vectors without round of error because round of error is always eliminated when you normalize uh, uh, when you orthogonalize not normalize when you orthogonalize u k with the with another vector. So, you have a vector which has some round of error you do a projection with another vector and subtract that part. So, round of error is in a way also subtracted and it has been shown that this is the modified uh, gram schmidt algorithm where basically you uh, subtract. So, you start with uh, part, uh, start with i is equal j is equal to 1 find the uh, uh, length of the vector and uh, find the unit vector then you take that unit vector and take dot product of the unit vector with all other vectors in that set and subtract it from all the vectors. So, in this state and then you go for 2 and do this thing. So, subtract the projection of uh, on j th vector and in the next step you project 
the remain remaining part on j plus 1 th vector. Uh, so, essentially this is a much stable algorithm and in uh, next class we will see that if we compare uh, gram schmidt with modified gram schmidt in certain cases where there is some component where round of error can be vital or there is some calculation in which round of error can be vital. For example, I am uh, subtracting from 1, 1.0001. If there is no round of error, it will be 0 0.001, but if there is a round of error after second decimal place, this will be 0 and division with them will give me a infinitely large number. So, in cases where round of error is important, we will see that gram schmidt uh, modified gram schmidt gives much better result than gram schmidt and actually gram schmidt algorithm fails you, fails to provide you a orthogonal set of vectors. So, in next class we will see an example with modified gram schmidt and gram schmidt algorithm and then we will see a q what is called a keyword decomposition or how a matrix can be decomposed into a q matrix and some other matrix which is an R matrix and that can be used for matrix uh, solution of matrix equations. Thank you.